Hi, my name's Juliet Bryant and I want to tell you a little story about my journey through my pregnancy and the birth of this little beautiful boy, Zachary David Bryant. This is my third child and I really felt through the last two pregnancies that I learnt a lot and I really wanted to follow my instincts with this pregnancy and trust in my body and trust in the natural process of birth. And it's funny how challenging this actually could be. Uh, and I found this. But I really felt this desire to trust. So I went with that. And my husband felt the same. So it was a really good journey that we went on together. And through the process of being pregnant, we didn't want to have scans. We, we wanted to have as little intervention medically as we could. Uh, ideally, none at all. I did see the midwives and I did, you know, follow that, that whole protocol, but not having the scans. Um, I had to do a lot of research to really go with this because people wanted to make sure that I knew what I was doing. I had to see consultants and all of the rest of it. Because people don't do this, they don't trust their instincts. We're taught not to by the medical <laughs> profession. We're taught that we have to trust other people, but ultimately who knows their bodies better than us? So through the whole pregnancy, this is what happened. And it was a joyous pregnancy. And uh, as you can see, I've got a beautiful little boy out of it. But when it came to the actual whole birth, we wanted to have a home birth. And um, the pregnancy carried on and I got to 42 weeks and people were getting very twitchy. People were twitchy because I'd had no scans in the first place. So, you know, there were a few obstacles that we had to overcome. Um, and there's a lot of fear that's constantly thrown at you. Well, if you don't do this, this could be the case. And if you don't do this, this could be the case. And sometimes I felt this fear was a bit overwhelming, but what really helped me was the support that I had from people around me. There was a lot of support, which was a wonderful thing. And this really helped me to trust what I was doing and trust this process of listening to my body. You know, it's insane, isn't it, that we have to have this support to trust in ourselves. But that trust was uh, an amazing thing to get me through this process. So at 42 weeks, in order to carry on having a home birth, because this one still wasn't here, we had to have a scan. So we went in for a scan. I thought, you know, ultimately, if we have a scan at this point, a short scan, then we can keep going the way we wanted because I didn't want to be induced and I didn't want to have my baby in hospital, if at all possible. But ultimately, I also didn't want to risk his health or well-being. You know, this was really a key concern of mine as well. You know, it's so important, isn't it, that, that we are able to trust, but that we're able to have that safety as well. So... At 42 weeks we went and had this scan and at first it all seemed like it was going really well. Uh, we told the stenographer we wanted it as short as possible. I had some protection on me because I didn't want the rays, you know, the ultrasonic rays affecting him or me. So I had some um, bioprotection, some crystals and things like that. We said as short as possible we just want this to be brief. So we had the scan, it all seemed okay. The placenta wasn't in the way, all that kind of jazz. And we went to see the consultant and the consultant instantly said, well, you know, I'm really concerned because you're past 42 weeks. You know, each, each day that goes up, there's a risk of stillbirth, all this other stuff. So lots of fear being thrown up at us. I have to say she was a very good consultant and she did give us space as well. So it wasn't just all this fear. It was a lot of that. And then she said, your amniotic fluid is very low. So I'm not very happy with this because this could mean the placenta's failing or X, Y or Z. Anyway, what happened next was that I said, well, I think maybe it might be leaking slightly the last day or so. So she said, well, there's a simple test we can do. And we'd been taught by a hypnobirthing teacher, this BRAINS acronym, which is what are the benefits? What are the risks? Like, what does my intuition say? Like what, action, what other alternatives are there? Um, so this, this was a really interesting thing. So we asked this, you know, like, what are the benefits of having this test? What are the risks? You know, I don't want anything going up there that's going to cause infection. So we had the test done and we found out we were actually leaking this uh, hind water. So she said, well, if this is the case, I want you in straight away to be induced. 
at which point I burst into tears. This was not what I wanted, you know, it was a shock to my system. And that shock really threw me and I thought, oh God, what do we do? So I asked at that point if there was, like what the scope was for us doing it any other way. What, what was the, the, the outside parameters of us coming in to be induced? And she said, well, every day you leave it, you, your risk of infection goes up. I said, what if I take some garlic? Like, will that help? And she said, well, it won't hurt. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna mega dose on the garlic pills, which I did. But she was kind enough to allow us the space. She saw that we needed space and time to go away and process this because this is such a major thing. And this is why I think so many processes go wrong in the hospital is if you're just whipped in there and you don't have time to mentally prepare, what kind of state are you in? In order to give birth naturally or as naturally as you can, you need to be relaxed. How are you gonna be relaxed with all this stress running through your body of, of not being able to process a change of scenery, a change of, of what you'd planned? So she gave us till the Wednesday. We booked in on the Wednesday. This was the Monday for an induction. And we said, we're gonna go away and do this, you know, try everything we can the natural way to bring on this labor. So, Monday night we came home, we had a nice hot curry and then we had an early night. I really wanted to rest and just recharge and allow my mental, my subconscious and my conscious brain time to process what was happening. And throughout the night I was visualising giving birth at home. You know, it kept, I kept waking up at a wee as you do in the last bit of pregnancy and visualising, visualising, visualising as strongly as I could. And when I woke up on Tuesday morning, it was amazing because this deep sense of calm really washed over me. I had this amazing feeling of just being very present and grounded in the moment. And it stayed with me the whole day. It was quite remarkable. I wanted to be in nature. I wanted to go outside. I kept going out into the garden and just sitting on the grass and sitting there and connecting with the earth and just asking the earth to really support me and help me in this process. I also booked a reflexology session, which was amazing. And the woman who did it, Karen Peters, was great. She was working on all the pressure points to do with the cervix and helping the body to prepare. But what she also did was some emotional freedom um, technique, the tapping, EFT, to help me unlock any subconscious fears that I had about the whole birth process. And this was amazing because we do hold fear and that fear holds tension in our body which can stop things that we don't even realise we're blocking. So just to be able to process that and talk and release some of these things was a really important uh, thing for me. And after the reflexology I was just trying to stay in the zone. My husband said, look, we need to talk about tomorrow. I said, I can't talk about tomorrow. I just have to be in this moment. I have to be present. I have to be focused on it going successfully at home. This is what I need. And he said, okay, well, I need to focus on obviously if we have to go in tomorrow. I said, that's fine. You do that and I'll stay in this space of it's happening now. We are going into labor. We are having our baby at home. So that's what the day involved. We uh, were getting homeopathics. My husband had to go out and get those uh, from the shop. Um, so he went out with our littlest one to get those. And en route back, he stopped off at the library and he ran into some of the mums from the school who were really supportive. And he was able to have a space to vent as well because obviously he needed to express his emotions about the whole uh, occasion, about what was happening. And one of the mums gave him this brilliant tip. She said, clary sage. Now we had clary sage and we were using it. We were diluting it and massaging it. I had it in oil burners. I was putting it in the bath, but she said, put it on the acupressure points neat. So he got back really excited, you know, really a different person. And we started putting this clary sage neat on, taking the, the pulsatilla, the homeopathics every hour. And very, very quickly, things started to change in my body. I could feel a shift. Another friend gave me an amazing piece of advice. She said, get into the position, set up your nest, set it up how you want to give birth and get in the position and visualize it. So when my husband went out to teach his yoga class that evening, I set up my birth nest in the living room. I put on the music I wanted to have. I was singing, I was chanting, I was dancing, and I was in the position that I visualized the baby coming out. And this is actually how the baby did come out, so that's quite remarkable. And things really started kicking off. And once they did, it was quite quick after that. The process really sped up and 
my husband got back at 8.20 in the evening and they were every three minutes the contractions. And in order to deal with the contractions, I've been doing hypnobirthing, but what I really felt called to do was to make sound. So through every contraction, I'd breathe in and I'd do the hypnobirthing, the waves of relaxation, and then I'd go and make whatever sound I could for as long as my breath would carry me. And then I'd take another breath, breathing in these waves of, of water. I just imagined water flowing up and then releasing it with this sound. So each contraction was two or three breaths. And this really helped me. The pain was just going, it was going with the sound. It was such an amazing thing just to let my body take over, my voice to really express itself. And uh, this is how the labour went. When my husband got back from yoga, he dealt with our little one who was playing upstairs and he was there with me as well. And he was behind me when it got intense, you know, holding my back, pushing these points and making the sound with me. So we were both singing together through these waves. And um, before I knew it, this massive pressure came over my body. It was that need to push. I was like, oh God. And I got scared. This fear came over me because I thought it's been so quick. I didn't want any checks. So I didn't know how dilated I was. I didn't know any of that. I thought it's been so quick. It hasn't been much time. Am I ready? And I thought, can I do this? Can I actually push this baby out? He felt massive. And uh, so I did have that moment of wobble and the amazing midwife turned to my husband and said, she's getting scared, I didn't know this. And then she bent down in my ear and she started whispering. She said, your baby is coming. She said, just imagine you holding your baby, looking in your baby's eyes and feeding your baby. <laughs> and um, <laughs> sorry, it's a bit emotional thinking about it. So I started doing that, I was visualising that and I thought, oh yes, and I, my body started to relax again because the last thing you want is to be tense because obviously he wouldn't come out then. And then it, the pain did get intense again and I started to scream and she said, you've been singing the whole time. She said, you don't want your baby's first sounds to be screaming. Sing your baby out. And I thought, oh, you're right, you're right, come on, focus again. And so I sang, my husband and I together went, oh, and we sang our boy out into the world. And my husband passed the baby through to me. He said, it's a boy. I didn't quite know how to take him. I was all a bit floppy and loose. And, you know, I was like, oh God, what do I do? And handed me this beautiful angel, Zachary David Bryant. And we were at home. It worked the way we wanted it to at the 11th hour. You know, it was 11.05, so it literally was the 11th hour. But we hadn't had to go into hospital. We hadn't had to deal with that. And, you know, there are so many contributing factors to it, but the power of our mind, positive thought, focusing and visualising, the power of these acupressure points and reflexology, the power of essential oils, the power of prayer and support from friends and family who are vibing us, you know, we could feel those vibes of love coming out to us. All of these things aided, oh, homeopathy obviously, is of course, as well, aided this birth happening the way we wanted it to. So you can have a natural birth. You know, sometimes we do need intervention and that's okay too. But it's the power of our thoughts and the power of where we're at, which is so important, and the power to trust and listen to your body. This is the most important thing through everything in life. Listen to yourself because we are truly magnificent beings. And that's really what is come has come for me out of this whole birth process that my body knows what to do and I am a divine being as is this one, as are we all. So I hope you've enjoyed this story of our natural birth. Take care.